Oakhurst, New Jersey, the location of the family-owned restaurant Mike and Nelly's. It was a successful restaurant run by the father-son duo of Nelly and his son Mike since 1996. But things went south once Nelly passed away. That meant more work for Mike, the restaurant getting neglected, and an overall decline in quality. Mike is now more controlling and won't let anyone, even his cousin and sous chef Daniel, cook anything in the kitchen. I don't trust my staff to get the job done like I can do it. As long as I'm making it, I know it's 100%. To make matters worse, he hasn't quite gotten over the passing of his father, Nelly, and has developed a drinking problem. All right, guys, beers for everybody. Go grab them, man. One for me, too, right? And like most failing restaurant owners, he's in denial about his cooking, with the food just not being up to par anymore. The food is not the problem here. It's either the atmosphere, the ambience, or the service. With a concerned family, including his daughters, Lexi and Samantha, who also work at the restaurant, can the burnt-out Mike turn things around with the help of Chef Ramsay? Before Gordon enters the restaurant, he's given a briefing by server Samantha about how exactly things have gone downhill. Essentially, Mike has struggled to get past his father's shadow and is simply overwhelmed and depressed now. Gordon later enters the restaurant and is greeted by Mike's other daughter, Lexi, who is the restaurant hostess. While Gordon is charmed by her beauty, something else grabs his attention soon after. Did somebody die in here last night? No. Okay. It's possible. Uh, oh, Jesus. Okay, what happened? Well, that? All right, I, follow I'm, me, I'm, sir. Eventually, Gordon meets Mike and is excited to try out the food, given that the latter rated it in the high nines. The menu is unlikely to have a similar rating, given that Gordon's has a big coffee stain on it. There's also no clear identity for the restaurant based on the number of different dishes on the menu. Not to mention, the smell of the place is still overbearing for Gordon, with the filthy carpet being a major culprit. Mike is confident in his food, though. Chef Ramsay will like the food here. Anything that I make him, he's gonna like. Guaranteed. While Gordon waits for his food, he feels the urge to fix a broken wall lamp above another diner, only to no avail. The first item arrives, and it's a linguine with shrimp sauce. However, it's bland, watery, and the shrimp are rubbery. It would be lucky to even get a five. Mike takes the criticism well, in that he doesn't get aggressive. That said, he has no idea what Gordon is talking about. Next up is the Chicken Murphy, and as far as presentation goes, it's a hot mess. Taste-wise, it's not any better, and it's overcooked and soggy. Mike receives the feedback, and there's a slight dent in his armor. But still, he remains confident in his steak cooking skills as Gordon receives the final dish, the Steak Nelly. Is that a steak or charcoal? Oh, chef, that's a piece of the steak. Unsurprisingly, it tastes terrible, and Gordon spits it out. Even the server tries it, and says it's far from a so-called nine. Mike begrudgingly takes the news while still being in denial. In his world, this is the first time anyone has complained about his steak. For now, it's time for him to meet with Gordon face to face. Gordon gives him the hard truth, stating that the food wouldn't pass for over a two out of 10. Once again, Mike takes it well, especially compared to other owners slash chefs, but says Gordon is wrong and leaves. A face-palming Gordon can only leave and come back for the dinner service later that day to see how the kitchen fares with the full house. Mike takes a swig of his beer, this will be a reoccurring theme, and gets down to business. As we saw earlier, Mike doesn't trust his team and overestimates his cooking ability. That means he's the only one cooking. The food still manages to reach the customers quickly, but not without a whole load of presentation issues and subpar cooking. Food is being returned, and Mike remains convinced the customers are wrong while drinking his beer. Onions are, a onions are, are they a little too well done for you? Oh, yeah. Let me take them away and bring some fresh ones. Despite the lack of emotion on Mike's face, Daniel believes there is a genuine heartbreak in his eyes. The night is over. Mike tells his staff they can all get some beer and get him one, and Gordon is left speechless. He proceeds to give Mike some tough love and also brings up his drinking habit. Mike admits things are rough for him right now. He has two girls to get through college, and the business is failing. His passion is gone, and he is essentially lost. Diehard Kitchen Nightmares fans will know that Gordon grew up with an alcoholic father and a drug-addicted brother. And so, Gordon can sympathize with Mike, who is finally being open and honest. 
he urges him to get out of denial and rekindle his passion. As the sun rises the next day, Gordon visits their home to chat with the daughters about how badly Mike is hurting deep down. An emotional Lexi and Samantha later pour their hearts out to Mike and mention how hard he's working, as well as his lack of trust in his staff. Touched by their words, Mike vows to change his ways and is finally open to listening. Gordon later inspects the kitchen and is shocked to find old, raw, and stinky food just about everywhere. There's no fresh food to start with, so Gordon calls for the entire kitchen staff to arrive for a deep cleaning. Mike is embarrassed, but determined to fix things, which is a welcome sign, to say the least. Once the kitchen is cleaned, Gordon cooks up a ribeye and a filet steak. Despite still remaining confident about his own steak cooking abilities, Mike was left in awe at Gordon's artistry in the kitchen. The staff enjoy the food, but more than anything, Mike seems to have a fire in his belly again. What also needs a fire is the appalling carpets, with Gordon getting it replaced by professionals overnight. It's a new day and it's a new restaurant. Gordon unveils a brand new sign for Mike and Nelly's steakhouse in front of an overwhelmed and overjoyed Mike and his family and staff. The interiors are also completely revamped with a new carpet, new sleek chairs, and even some modern art on the walls. The restaurant is more spacious and elegant as a result. Most of all, the place finally smells nice once again, with the new carpet being the highlight. I'm gonna take my shoes off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there is also a new simple menu consisting of crab cakes, Angus sliders, mac and cheese, braised short rib, and tasty filet mignon. Everyone is excited to dig in and eat, but the real work starts later that night. It's day one of the new Mike and Nelly's era, and Gordon is changing things up in the kitchen. Going forward, Mike will do less, while Daniel will have a greater responsibility coordinating things. Customers receive their appetizers, and the reception is very positive. Mike and Daniel are working as a team. There's not a beer bottle in sight, either. So far, so good. But one hour into service, and they're no longer on the same wavelength. Mike is getting everyone confused with the tickets, and his old habits are resurfacing as he starts taking control of everything. Kill him here, man. I don't know what's gonna happen. Mike's not listening to what Chef Ramsay is saying. Things descend into chaos. Gordon is losing patience. But after a rather strong pep talk, Mike gets some focus back in the kitchen. It eventually turns into a successful night, with not one complaint about the food. Mike is actually smiling and happy for once, and his daughters are relieved. Mike is confident the restaurant will now be the most successful in all of New Jersey. The next day, Gordon congratulates Mike and says Nellie would be proud. The daughters thank Gordon for helping them turn the place around, and they part their ways. Gordon believes a miracle has occurred with Nellie being the restaurant's guardian angel. He leaves with a sense of hope that Mike and Nellie's can continue flourishing. We learn that in the weeks that follow, the new Mike and Nellie's did just that. The revamped menu was a hit with customers. Daniel was flourishing in his new role, and Mike was a happy camper who could now spend more time with his daughters. But what happened to everyone since, and is Mike and Nelly still in business today? The original episode aired in October 2011 as the third episode of the fifth season of Kitchen Nightmares. It was definitely one of the more unique and emotional episodes in Kitchen Nightmares, given Mike's depression that was evident throughout. Despite that, there was still humor present throughout, as pointed out by the many fans who reflected on the episode. When I aggregated all the comments on YouTube about this episode together, then sorted by popularity, the top comment poked fun at how Mike was the best boss ever, as he did all the work and then gave his employees free beer at the end of the night. One comment pointed out how the beer was censored, but you could still tell it was a Budweiser. There were others who were more serious in their assessment, stating how Mike was a good guy and that there is nothing funny about someone with a drinking problem. Another reflected on how Mike was a breath of fresh air and wasn't actually that bad personality-wise. He was simply just burnt out and depressed. Some also noted how it was the calmest they've seen Gordon when dealing with a chef, while one particular YouTube comment said it was hard to tell if Gordon was a chef or a psychiatrist at times. Regardless, Kitchen Nightmares was good publicity for Mike and Nellie's, as many went to the restaurant following the airing of the episode. On Yelp, customers spoke of how the place was the real deal, and Ramsey was truly a miracle worker. One Yelper said they were skeptical upon hearing of the menu changes, 
but left impressed with the food and service. That said, others complained that the renovations didn't have much attention to detail and that it looked much better on TV. The stained dropped ceiling tiles weren't replaced, for example. This reviewer was quite pleased overall with both the food and the service at the newly revamped M&N Steakhouse. She did feel the prices were a bit too high though. Overall, Mike and Nelly's still had a poor rating with just a 2.7 out of 5. Mike and Nelly's would permanently close its doors in January 2012, not more than a year after Gordon Ramsay's visit. However, Mike wouldn't leave the business for too long. He later began work as an executive chef at the newly created Park 33 in Freehold in July 2012. This reviewer described the place as a type of restaurant that seems to change owners slash names on a yearly basis. Mike, as head chef, was going to spearhead the latest attempt at success in the space. His addition proved to be popular locally, going by the Yelp reviews, one of which mentions the many items Gordon introduced in the simplified menu at Mike and Ellie's. Mike continued to utilize the official Mike and Ellie's Twitter account after the restaurant closed to post updates. He even went so far as to claim that Park 33 was in some ways the new Mike and Ellie's, and invited former patrons of Mike and Ellie's to visit him there. During this time, a post from a deleted Facebook page in October interestingly claimed Kitchen Nightmares showed a fictional account of the inner workings at Mike and Ellie's. Unfortunately, we can't see the full details of the post. Meanwhile, Mike's stint at Park 33 didn't last very long, leaving in September of 2013. He would continue to ply his trade by becoming the executive chef for Blue Basil Catering Company in April of 2014. In that role, he notably prepares gourmet meals for Fortune 500 company private planes and remains in that position to this very day. All in all, it's nice to see Mike have some stability in what seems to be a very lucrative position. But what about the rest of the family? We don't know too much as they have seemingly stayed away from the social media spotlight. However, they have made appearances on Mike's Facebook page. Following Mike and Nellie's, Lexi continued her education at Brookdale Community College, where she earned an associate's degree in health sciences and distinction on the Dean's list, crafting her into a skilled ultrasound technician with story-rich expertise. She posted on her Facebook page that she started a new job in March 2018. Soon after, Lexi discovered love, dating Sam before getting married. Soon after that, they went on to create a family together. Mike shared a picture of himself, Lexi, and Lexi's child on social media in May 2021. Samantha also got married and has kids now, as she shared an image of her family on Facebook in March of 2023. According to Rocket Reach, she also currently works as the manager of clinical health services for a CVS health company. And finally, there is sous chef Daniel, who as per his LinkedIn, held a variety of roles after Mike and Nelly's, including the latest, the corporate chef at Mazkio's Food Services as of July 2021. The building that housed Mike and Nelly's became an Italian restaurant called Posilipos. It has a 3.7 rating on Yelp and is open to this day. Although Mike and Nelly's shut down shortly after Kitchen Nightmares, it's nice to see everyone doing well and in high spirits. 